This video is part 2 of a 3 part series. You will find the link to part 1 in the description below. After the banishment of Ugisi Owodo, there was a power tussle amongst the noble chiefs and the Edionwere for who to inherit the throne. The people of Ogbodo Migbodo instead decided to elect the next leader. Ogbodo Migbodo was to become a republic. Evian, an Hodion who killed Osoga, was elected and proclaimed Okaevo, which means the head of state. He became the prime minister of Ogbodo Migbodo and was loved during his reign. That's until he tried to make his son, Ogeaiwe, his successor. When he became old, he was reminded by the Uzama, a class of chiefs who crowned the Ogisio, that he was not one of them. After his death, Ogaiwe ascended the throne and was met with intense anger and resentment from the people of the kingdom. To consolidate power, he installed one of his brothers as the Oila, which is the head of the Uzama. He also made another of his brothers a priest to deify their father, a rite only reserved for the Ogisios. While this event unfolded, an ambassador on the behest of the chiefs was sent to the Oni of Ife, requesting he sends one of his sons to be their ruler. When the son of the Oni came, Ogenwen was ousted from power. It's important to note that Ogenwe did not relinquish the throne willingly. Aramiya, the son of the Oni of Ife, ruled from a palace built for him at Uzama. He married the daughter of the Onoge of Eyo, named Erenwe. They had a son who would later become the first Oba of Benin. After some years, Oramiyo began to feel resentments from the chiefs and people of Ogodomigudo. He renounced the throne, claiming the land was a place of vexation. He proclaimed that only a person who was born of the land could rule it, calling it Ilei Binu, which would later become the name of the kingdom. Oramiyo remained in the kingdom. To let his son come of age, when he had grown old enough, he returned back to Ileife. The reign of Oba Eweka I, who was the first Oba of Benin, was met with resistance from some of the members of the Uzama. They pitted him against the people of the kingdom, painting him as an outsider. Throughout his reign, he had to compromise with the Uzama when making decisions president that remained for the next two Obas. By the time Oba Ewedo came into power, the Uzama had become so powerful that they were often called Ewanezi Zanwa Onwa, meaning the people who do not show respect to the Oba. The Uzama practically ran the kingdom from the city of Benin, which was the power center of the kingdom. Obahewedo waged war against the Uzama, who had backed by Ogenwe, a descendant of Ogenwe, who was deposed by Oromia. The Uzama chiefs lost the battle. Obahewedo received the royal symbols from Ogenwe and the royal chiefs. He built his palace in the city of Benin to signify his victory over the Uzama. Obahewari the Great was the 13th Oba of Benin. He expanded the capital and modeled it after the great city of Ileife. This involved a road network, radiating outward from the royal palace. He also commissioned the construction of the great Benin moat, called Ia, which surrounded the city, providing a defensive fortification from invading forces. He also constructed a wall, separating the Oba's royal court from that of the Uzama, creating an inner city. 
Dutch sailors told tales of how beautiful Benin was, comparing the size of the Obaina city to Harlem. Some claimed they saw five galleries, similar to those at the stock exchange in Amsterdam. Obaihewari was an expansionist who commanded his army into war. He went on to conquer Yoruba and Igbo lands and much of the delta region of the river Niger. Obaozoluwa was the 15th Oba of Benin and a very successful warrior. Whenever he conquered new territories, he sent one of his sons to rule this new land, ensuring loyalty and stability of said region, regardless of the distance. Sometimes, new territories could only be ruled partially or indirectly. In such instances, an enoge, which is an envoy, or more commonly an enjongwere, was appointed to rule in their stead. Sailors of King John II of Portugal made contact with the kingdom during the reign of Obao Zuluwa, establishing diplomatic and trade relationships with the kingdom. <laughs> Prince Osamwe, who will take on the name Obae Singe, was poised to take the throne after his father Obao Zuluwa, but his half-brother Awan the Giant, who was the Enoge of Udo, while Prince Osanwe was the Enoge of the city of Benin. Aran the giant raised the army of Udo, which was a powerful city-state, to take the throne for himself. But Queen Hida, who was the mother of Prince Osanwe, was able to convince the people of Benin and other surrounding provinces to fight with her son. This led to a civil war, which Prince Osanwe eventually won. But unfortunately, the civil war had left the kingdom at a weakened state. Sensing an opportunity, the city-state of Ida, of the Gala people, revolted against Benin. Again, Queen Hida came to the rescue of her son and was victorious. Due to her feats in battle, Prince Osanwe, now Obaesige, built a palace for her called Egwayoba and bestowed on her the title Yoba, which means Queen Mother. He deified her and commissioned various art and crafts in a image to immortalize her, which to this day can be argued to be the symbol of the Benin culture. During the reign of Obaesige, Benin established diplomatic and trade relationship with Portugal, ivory, spices, clothes, and slaves were traded for clothes, chloral beads, manilas, and guns. This trade made the Oba very rich and powerful, further cementing the image of the Oba as a god king who could command riches across the sea. Over the coming centuries, the empire grew stronger and wealthier, establishing trade with other powers at the time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, Please like, share and subscribe and please do leave a comment as this really helps the channel a lot. The next video, which is the third and final video on the Benin series, will be on how the clash between the Benin Empire and the British Empire led to the invasion of 1897. Hope to see you there. <laughs>